What you can share of us right now? Well, thank you for your interest. As you rightly point out, I'm the ambassador of Cyprus to Canada yeah. because Cyprus and Canada are members of the Commonwealth. Ambassadors in these countries are called High Commissioners. High Commissioners, yes. So I'm the High Commissioner of Cyprus to Canada. In fact, I am the first ever resident High Commissioner of Cyprus in Canada, meaning I am based in the national capital in Ottawa. Before, Canada was represented by Cyprus from elsewhere, from abroad. It has been an interesting uh, challenge. Uh, I established the embassy uh, two years ago. Uh, it was a very important development. It's a sign of the importance we attach to Canada, of how strengthening the relationship is and the opportunities that it offers. Uh, as you can appreciate, this is a very hard and challenging work, but I am enjoying it and I'm trying to do my best to improve the relations between Cyprus and Canada. So what are you finding actually the most valuable here in the Cyprus community? Thank you for asking that. You're right, in absolute numbers they are a small community, but if you take into account the size of Cyprus, it is a sizable community abroad. It's one, in fact, one of the largest communities uh, of Cypriots abroad. Uh, they are a very vibrant community. You may have heard some of the stories of the honorees tonight, yes. how they came from hard hardship and how they struggled uh, to achieve something here through hard work, uh, open-mindedness, education, and so on. They are also, I think, like with many other ethnic communities, um, a living bond, a bridge between Canada and their country of origin, both in terms of uh, culture, tradition, but also in more uh, hard things like uh, economic things or trade. Uh, that they can facilitate uh, ties and cooperation in these areas. So do you see actually in the Cyprus community a lot of connections still with the Orin land in regards to the trade, in regards to the economy, in, ex in regards to the exchange of ideas and how to do business? Do you see that a lot? What I see is a very strong uh, commitment still to the tradition to the heritage that they carry with them. Uh, you may attend some of their festivals here, which is a celebration of that heritage, of that tradition, especially when you come from a place like Cyprus with 10,000 years of history and civilization. They are very proud of that. Uh, they want to share that with their children, their grandchildren. That's a very important challenge to maintain the language but also the understanding of the, the culture that they came from. That extends to some of the trade. So do you see in the younger generation um, still interest in their roots, in their traditions? I think you're right to ask that. It's, of course, much more difficult with a newer and a newer generation that is born here, uh, starts going to school here. It's easier to uh, be assimilated into uh, the society. But what I see with the younger generation of Cypriots is that they do maintain that interest, both in language and in traditions. It's also important for the organized uh, part of the community to elicit that interest. For example, they are doing dances, they're teaching traditional dances. And I'm very pleased to see the young ones Dance. Taking uh, yes. dances. It, you, find, you need to find ways of attracting the interest, not imposing it, making it fun for the younger ones. We would like to talk to, to 
to Marta Hensi and we would like to know what is going on today, tonight. Okay, to, uh, it is the Cyprus Canada Chamber of Commerce annual Christmas dinner and dance. At the same time, we're celebrating the 150th anniversary of Canada, this wonderful country who welcomes and depresses all, never matter of ethnicity, uh, color, religion, it welcomes everybody. And that we're very thankful to Canada, and that's what we're celebrating here tonight. And we're also celebrating the contributions of um, Cypriot, um, Cypriot Canadians who emigrated to Canada. Quite a lot of them emigrated after the Turkish invasion, and uh, they they contributed towards Canada, as you saw tonight with all the awards. Uh, a lot of awards tonight. We, we acknowledge mm -hmm. all the Cypriot immigrants, not all of them, because there are a lot. Uh, if you take into consideration that Cyprus is only a small island with about 800,000 population, who have a lot of um, professors, scientists, um, doctors, uh, business entrepreneurs, which they really, really I did so much here in Canada. How often are um, usually preparing events like that? This is an annual Christmas dinner and dance. So, because of Canada's 150th birthday, we had to do something special, and that's what we did this year. But we have this event on an annual basis, our annual Christmas dinner and dance. But as I said, today is a very special day for us Cypriot immigrants, Cypriot Canadians, as you say, which are very proud, we're very thankful to Canada, to the governments of Canada for embracing everybody. No matter who they are, from where they're coming from, we're all one. Today, and it's amazing food because of the nice, beautiful team. We are here for 44 years now. We work to the most beautiful places in Toronto, and we are proud what we have, what we serve, and what we do for the people. Can you tell us about your background? Uh, well, I am uh, Armenian. Uh, I have been living in Canada for 39 years and I have been involved in uh, the multicultural community in different capacities. I have been the secretary of the Canadian Ethnocultural Council and uh, human rights issues and the multicultural issues, ethnic communities and defending the underprivileged and uh, most vulnerable in our society is an issue that it's very dear to my heart. And uh, of course, uh, I was also appointed as a citizenship judge and I served for six years uh, and two terms in the Citizenship Commission, which was, which was for me the highest privilege that I can get because I came to this country as a refugee and I never expected to reach the height that I was uh, as a citizenship judge. And uh, this is, it shows you that Canada is land of opportunity and it is land where it's up to you and the individual you can make whatever you want in your life as long you are persistent you are committed and you can reach there is no l limit for your dreams so i was privileged to serve the people of uh, canada the government of canada and uh, i learned so much about uh, the Canadian people during my six years. I presided over uh, 10,000 hearings. Uh, I presided over citizenship ceremonies. And the most important aspect of the job that I have done, it was uh, the citizenship ceremonies where people, they come 
and they have dreamed to become a Canadian citizen. They have dreamed to take the oath of citizenship. And I see when I preside over citizenship ceremony, I hand them the certificates, people start crying. People, they don't believe that they are finally becoming Canadian citizen. Their yes. dream is reached. <laughs> Where was a case in your career that you remember the most? Actually, I remember very well uh, a case of a lady from South Asia. Uh, she was a young lady uh, and uh, she failed uh, uh, twice in the uh, written knowledge test. And she came to me, that was her final opportunity. And when she came to me and I asked her, tell me something, this is your third attempt to become a Canadian citizen. Why you failed the first time? She started crying. And after that, she said, judge, you know, I am alone here in Canada. I was married, I have two children. I'm having difficult time. I cannot concentrate on the exam. I cannot concentrate because I am under pressure. And Everyone, everyone, they make fun of me. Everyone, they told me that, oh, you're a failure, you cannot succeed, uh, you will fail again, etc. So I was touched by her story. I calmed her down, I said, listen, uh, I would try to cooperate with you. It's very simple, don't panic. And she passed. Uh, when I told her, uh, listen, congratulations, you're getting your Canadian citizenship. Wonderful. You should see the smile. She came almost, she started hug me and saying, thank you very much, Judge. You don't mean what it means to me to pass this test and become a Canadian citizen.